Hey, it's Gersh Kunstman at Streets Blog. And look, there's a lot of people talking about the way in which New Yorkers get around on regular bikes, e-bikes, and other forms of e-mobility, and now gas-powered mopeds as well. Now, there's so much confusion. One of the reasons is because an electric bike with pedals looks a lot like a regular bike. A moped is one of those things you sit down on. Those are illegal if they don't have license plates, and some of them cannot even get a license plate because they don't have the proper vehicle identification number. So the point is, those are almost entirely illegal. However, they're out there on the streets a lot, Straight up acoustic bicycle. Probably can't go more than 12, 14 miles an hour in the bike lane legal. Great for the environment, great for congestion, great for his health, his stress level. We, I think we really want to encourage a lot more of that. Right now we're not doing a great job of encouraging a lot of that because our bike lanes are too narrow. So that's one of the new generation city bike electric bikes. They're pedal assist bikes. They're capped at 18 miles an hour and they're heavier than the first generation of city bike e-bikes and pedestrians do get scared of them. So that's what we call a class three e-bike. It's got a throttle, it has pedals, but it has a throttle to enable that driver to go as fast as 25 miles an hour. There's three classes of electric bikes in New York City. There's class one, class two, class three. Class one is just a regular pedal assist, like a city bike or a, a regular pedal assist electric bike. They don't, they're allowed to go up to 20. Most of them don't because they just don't have the power for that. Then there's class two, which is also capped at 20 miles an hour, but it has a throttle. And then there's class three electric bikes, which have a throttle, but can go up to 25 legally. Again, no vehicle is allowed to go faster than 25 on a city street, a regular city street, and that includes cars. Unfortunately, some of these guys soup up their e-bikes to go faster than 25 and they shouldn't be doing that. So there you see a regular electric scooter. That's a stand-up scooter. People always call moped scooters. That's a scooter. Totally legal in bike lanes. Generally speaking they don't go more than 15 miles an hour but some of them do go more than 15 miles an hour and again they spook people in bike lanes. They spook pedestrians waiting to cross the light. Okay so that was an illegal moped. The reason it was illegal is it didn't have a plate on it. Those vehicles need to have a plate on it. The problem is some of them cannot be licensed because they don't have a vehicle identification number. In any event, they're always illegal in bike lanes. They're illegal without a plate in the roadway. A lot of delivery workers are using them, however, because the battery crisis on their lithium ion bikes and also because they're cheaper. So here's where it gets confusing. There's three classes of mopeds as well. Now mopeds, do, despite their name, do not have pedals. There's class C, which can only go 20 miles an hour. It's capped at 20. That's like a Revel, a Revel moped, ones that always have a license plate and aren't allowed in bike lanes. Class B can go up to 30 miles an hour. Again, needs a license plate. And class A can go 40 miles an hour legally. All of those vehicles have to be in the car and truck lanes. A lot of the owners of those vehicles don't feel safe in the car and truck lanes because they're battling big trucks like this. So the question is, where do they go? They can't go in the bike lanes, they need a plate, and they have to go in the street. And that's a mess. This is especially a problem on New York City bridges, especially the Queensboro Bridge, which has a bike lane, but that bike lane in two directions is shared with pedestrians in two directions. So now you have vehicles of multiple speeds passing each other on a two-way, one-lane one bridge with pedestrians. That's terrible and it needs to change. And the same is true of the Williamsburg Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge where there recently was a horrific crash involving high-speed mopeds on lanes where they should not be. So listen, this is just a fucking motorcycle. I mean, there's no way to describe this other than the fact that that's a motorcycle. Interestingly, he had a plate. So he's legal, except he's not legal in a bike lane. So that's a throttle e-bike class three supposed to be capped at 25 miles an hour. I think he has souped up that bike to go faster. If you notice, he was making a delivery. Now that's a delivery worker. Where is he going? He's going to the house of, or office of somebody pr probably a lot wealthier than him who ordered food. Now, that's a problem because we've got a tech industry that lets you press a couple of buttons. You don't know where it came from. You don't know how it got there. And then you stand on that wall and you complain about the guys who are delivering it. And I think that that's something we need to address also with these companies. They have created a system with no accountability, both for the orderer and for the company. So when pedestrians say to me, I'm scared, I say, well, okay. It's a legitimate fear to be afraid. However, the, still the greatest fear on our streets is created by car and truck drivers, which as you know, cause 40,000 injuries to pedestrians, motorists, and cyclists every year and kill a couple of hundred people every year. Now, I'm not trying to say that other forms of mobility don't 
frighten pedestrians as well. Of course they do. Pedestrians are the most vulnerable road users and they need to be protected the most. The question is how to do that. And that's the challenging question right now for the DOT, for these pedestrian groups, for streets blocks, for transportation alternatives. Everybody's asking the same question. It's just there's a lot of answers out there. It all starts with the roads. The roads are badly designed. We've got too many people competing for too little space in the bike lanes. We've got too many big cars and trucks taking up too much space. Maybe congestion pricing will help that a little bit, but we need to start somewhere.